Now that I think of it, I actually had a pretty good reading month with very high ratings and a couple low ratings, but pretty high for me because usually I give a lot of threes. So I'm happy with this reading month. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my December wrap up for 2020 part 1. I read a total of 12 books this month so I'm splitting it up into two parts. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I read was a graphic novel. It is called Pumpkin Heads and this is by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. This graphic novel follows Deja and Josiah who are seasonal best friends who work together at a pumpkin patch every fall. This is their senior year year of high school which means that they will not be returning to the pumpkin patch next year. So they decide to make their final shift an adventure where Deja will be able to try all of the autumnal snacks and Josiah will finally speak to the girl that he has been pining after for three years and it's like the story of that. I thought this was a very cute graphic novel. I definitely should have read it in the fall during Halloween season instead of, you know, Christmas time. I literally finished this on Christmas Day. So, you know, wasn't exactly the smartest move that I made, but it was still a lot of fun. Very cute. I loved Deja. She is so funny and I definitely relate to her and her love for snacks. She and Josiah had very complimentary personalities, so I really liked watching all of their interactions together. But like I said, I definitely should have read this in the full time, but four out of five stars regardless. The next book that I picked up was The Cousins by Karen A. McManus, and I also gave this a four out of five stars. This follows Jonah, Aubrey, and Millie Story, who have never met their grandmother because she disowned her children 20 years ago. When they all receive an invitation to work in the summer at their grandmother's private resort, their parents believe that this might be their chance to reconnect with their mother. But when family secrets start to come Come to light, the story cousins must decide how they fit into the family drama and it's like the story of that. I really enjoyed One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus so I was very excited to pick this one up. It was very entertaining trying to figure out the mystery about why the story children were disowned in the first place. I do think that the family drama was fun to try to unravel but I do think that the big reveal in the end was a little silly and didn't really make a lot of sense in the long run for how it would have played out in the real world. I do like how the chapters alternated perspectives between the three story cousins and we also got some flashback chapters from Allison's point of view, which is Millie's mother, to before the four siblings were disowned. I think that all three of the story cousins were unique in their own way and brought something to the story. I also really liked watching their relationships between them grow and change as a story developed. I also really liked how they all grew in the end and became better people, you know what I'm saying? But overall this was a lot of fun and a very addictive read, so four out of five stars. The next book that I read was Someone We Know by Sherry LaPena and I give this a 4.5 out of five stars. When a woman named Amanda is murdered in a neighborhood, everybody else in the neighborhood is on edge trying to figure out who the murderer is. After multiple break-ins in this neighborhood, it is discovered that a teenage boy is behind it all. He never actually stole anything, but he's pretty good with computers, so after hacking into every Everybody's computers, he discovers a lot of secrets that may help solve the case of Amanda's murder, and it's like the story of that. This is actually my fourth Sherry LaPena book, and I have come to love this author. I am so addicted to their writing style. Anytime I pick up one of their books, I am hooked from the start and never want to put it down. This was definitely a very fun and addictive read. The drama in the neighborhood is a lot of fun and, like I said, very addictive. It was fun trying to figure out who the murderer was. Amanda's husband gave off such psychopath vibes and I was so here for it. If you are new to this channel, then you don't know this, but I love, like, psychopaths and serial killers. I find them so intriguing and interesting. I know it's weird. Sue me. I truly had no idea who the murderer was until the end and it was all revealed. Every single suspect that the police had lied and tried to deceive them, so it was very hard to eliminate any of them as suspects. I'm pretty sure I thought 
every single neighbor was the murderer at some point. I did end up taking off half a star because I was able to figure out who the murderer was, but it wasn't until pretty far into the story until I was able to figure out. So I mean, give and take, I guess, but it was still very entertaining. Overall, I definitely recommend checking it out if you want a very quick, addictive thriller read. So 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is definitely the one that I disliked the most out of all of my reads for the month, but it is The Reformed Vampire Support Group by Katherine Jinks. I gave this a 1.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a group of real-life vampires in Australia who have formed this support group with each other in order to help prevent them from biting and infecting humans with the vampire virus. So when one of their group members is staked and killed, they find a silver bullet on the scene and decide that they are going to travel across the country to discover who the killer is before he strikes again and it's like the story of that. This was an attempt at putting a spin on the romanticizing of vampires in the fact that it does the complete opposite. This story was very boring, it was very dull, with very very unlikable characters. I honestly disliked every single one of them. I also was not a fan of the use of the R word or other very offensive terms throughout the entire book. The only reason I gave it 0.5 was because there were some funny moments in the book, but overall I am not a fan. 1.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I picked up for this month was The Companion by Katie Allender. I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Margo who after the sudden death of her entire family, she finds herself in an orphanage. One day the Sutton family shows up at the orphanage offering to adopt Margo, but there is a catch. She must be the companion to their catatonic daughter Agatha, but not every Everything is as it seems at the Sutton household and it's the story of that. I enjoyed this book for the most part but it became very repetitive very quickly. I did really like the setting of the story. It was very spooky with the whole estate being in a very isolated area, but I think that it could have been utilized better. I just wanted to know more about the Copeland Hall and the family history. I think that the book did have some eerie moments, but it was very predictable, so it definitely brought the enjoyment down for me. I was intrigued at the beginning of the story, but it definitely began to drag with the plot line and everything during the middle of the book, and like I said, became very repetitive. I did like Margot as a main character, and I liked how she cared for and how she acted with Agatha. Agatha. The biggest complaint that I do have about this book was the romance. It felt very forced and honestly unneeded. I think if the book had just not included Barrett at all, then it definitely would have been more enjoyable for me, but that could also just be my opinion. Overall, it was okay, but way too predictable for me, so three out of five stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part one of the wrap-up is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. I gave this a four out of five stars. This is like the companion novel or I guess like the prequel or like what's the name for like 3.5 in a series? A novella. is a novella. It follows the cast of characters from A Court of Thorns and Roses series a week leading up to the winter solstice. A lot of people compare this to fan fiction and I 100% agree it definitely adds nothing to the overall story, but for me I really enjoyed it because I just liked seeing all the characters again. I just really liked their banter with each other and I liked how there were point of views from Nesta and Cassian. It definitely got me excited for the next book in the series. Overall, like, definitely not needed, but still fun, so 4 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so that was my part 1 wrap up for December 2020. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and check out part 2 when it is uploaded and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!